tonight, as well as another good friend, Gretchen Giles, who is also another, a great friend of Gerard's, and we're going to be your co-hosts for this evening. So welcome, Gerard. And who do you have Hi. with you in the kitchen tonight, Gerard? My sous chef, I like to call her my assistant, but she gets mad if I call her my assistant. She likes to be the boss. So this is my assistant <laughs> slash boss tonight. This is Olive, my daughter, and she's, uh, she's breaking up some of the fideo pasta. It's just an angel or pasta. She's breaking up into little tiny links that we're going to use uh, in this version of paella, which is a noodle paella as opposed to a rice paella. It's a much lighter style paella. To put it in California terms, it's more like the pinot of paellas. It's not a big heavyweight paella. It's lighter, more delicate, uh, a great flavor profile though, and I think it's really, really good. And a fun one to make. It's a very fast paella as well, so. Well, that's great. And, and speaking of uh, pinots, Gerard has also gifted both Gretchen and myself um, uh, uh, a sangria. So this is uh, the sangria can be it's a pint of sangria and you can purchase it from Gerard's. It's ten dollars. But I have to say, I'm looking forward to having mine and Gretchen looks like you've already started on yours. I'm enjoying mine immensely. And Louise has joined us from Maker Fair and she's got a cocktail going as well. Hi, Louise. Hey, Louise. Hi, I didn't know Louise was here. Awesome. That's right. She's watching on Facebook. Oh, she's watching. It's watching. So this is the series, um, the next four weeks, tonight we're, we're doing, we're kind of experimenting around with paella. And Gerard mentioned, this is a paella that doesn't use rice. I believe it's from Valencia, is that correct, Gerard? Uh, it's, it's close by. It's a little fishing village. It started, um, I guess this just started with, um, on, a, on a boat. Um, and they, uh, they wanted to use uh, the pasta instead of rice. And uh, this became, uh, a very popular one regionally in Spain, um, and it's it's one that is um, I'll make it a little smaller. It's one that is um, not very well known outside of Spain, but in Spain there's festivals for it and everything, and it's a really really good paella. I think it's fantastic. How do you pronounce it, Gerard? Fedoa. Fedoa. Fedoa or fideo. Oh, okay. Fideo. Fideo in Catalan means pasta, I believe. Oh, okay. So this is you clearly know, a, a seafood-based uh, dish. Seafood, Seafood-based, from... and, and some recipes call for saffron, some recipes actually don't. But it's, it's, it's definitely a much lighter style of paella. Um, I've already made a fish, uh, I made a, uh, a fish broth already. Um, but you can also buy this, this type of fish broth, these little cubes. We got these from Savory Spice in Santa Rosa. We also got saffron and smoked paprika there. So it's all easily attainable stuff. The pasta, normally called fedoa pasta, in Spain it's a, it's a fedoa, here it's angel hair pasta. It's totally easy to get. So it's a very easy paella to make. You can make it into a pipe, in a frying pan or a paella pan, whatever you want to do. I did a version last night where I cooked it and then I just put it in the oven uh, to finish it off. Today we're going to do it all totally on stove top as well. If my assistant allows it. Yeah? Is it okay? Okay. <laughs> so uh, we're going to start off. Uh, we're gonna first toast the fedoa noodles. So we gave a little light toast to some olive oil. It's got a little bit of color on them, and we're gonna put those aside for now. And they have not been boiled. Those are those are dry noodles. They are dry noodles. They've just been uh, uh, fried up a little bit in a little bit of, of olive oil. Just put a little olive oil in the pan so it starts to shimmer a little bit. Put the pasta noodles in. Give it a stir around, and then turn it off quickly because they will toast rather fast. Um, 10 minutes ago before we started this, I burnt two batches of them because I forgot about it so quickly. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start doing the sofrito. Uh, you can either buy a sofrito, or in this case, we just made the sofrito, which is bell peppers, onions, and garlic, and olive oil. And we cooked it down till it's a little syrupy and the, the onions are a little translucent. We've cooked that down and we're gonna turn that back on now. And then we're gonna start adding the rest of our goodies. We're gonna put in the fish broth, Bring it up to a boil, um, and then we'll start building the, the fedoa. Um, any questions from you? You want a cup of lemon for dad? I have a question. Yeah. When you said you can buy the sofrito, I've never heard that before. You can purchase pre-made sofrito? I'm amazed. You can. It's, it's definitely a specialty item, so you're not going to find it in, in, in every store, but it, it's definitely something you can purchase no problem. So. Huh. 
Huh. Especially these days. I mean, I think you can get it pretty easy. The, the fish bouillon, not so easy. Some of the recipes say you'll just go buy fish stock. Uh, you can find beef stock, veggie stock, and chicken stock, no problem. But finding fish stock is not as easy. No, it's true. Can you use clam juice if you need to? Uh, you can, and I was going to use clam juice. We use clam juice in our, in our seafood pie we do at the restaurant. Uh, but it's pretty, uh, it's pretty salty. I mean, it's really good. But I wanted to do something completely out of my wheelhouse today to try it out because we're just doing experiments at home. And I thought, let's see how, how it would go over. So Cool. Is that cool with you? Okay. <laughs> She's not nearly this uh, easy when it comes to homework in school every morning. I'm not sure what's going on right now. <laughs> so um, we're going to start in another pan right now. We are going to flash our calamari steaks. We've taken the calamari. Let me get this all set aside here. And Gerard, where do, where do you get your calamari steaks from? This is Monterey calamari. This is all local calamari. This is uh, Gulf shrimp, obviously not local, and then uh, sea scallops. And then we're gonna, we're gonna take the steaks and we're gonna cut them just into strips and we're gonna toast them. And I'm gonna leave them in the whole time. Yesterday, I flashed them and took them out and they were definitely nice and tender. But when we did the paella, the, the strips got a little bit rubbery. So we're gonna try putting them in and cooking them in the entire duration of the dish today and see how it works. Great, and for those that are following along, I've just put the recipe, Gerard's recipe, in the chat section. Okay, throwing. Gerard, did you hear Sherry's question? She was wondering where you found, where you get the calamari. Is it's, that Monterey, if, it's Monterey calamari. You can get it almost anywhere. San Jose Seafood, uh, Fiesta Market, pretty much wherever you want downtown. They've all okay. got it. Cool. Okay, so now we're just flashing the calamari. This dish is nice as toasting, so we're going to try and toast it a little bit before we add anything else to it. What we're going to do is we're going to take the sofrito and put it straight into there as well. The only thing I noticed on our recipe today is there was a, there was, I believe was a typo on the, um, on the fish stock. I'm not putting in five ounces of fish stock. I'm putting, I mean, five cups. I'm putting about one and a half cups of fish stock. Uh, okay, that's okay, okay, so the calamari is in. Very pretty. We're going to put a little bit of salt on it. Put the hood here. So Gerard, you said you're putting in um, one cup. How much? How much fish stock? I'll I'll check that. One, one and a half cups. Copy that. For for basically a half cup of pasta. The pasta is four ounces. It's about it's about four. About a half a cup. Okay. Okay. My lovely assistant is cutting up the lemon so nicely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why she's not giving me all kinds of grief. In the morning, it's hell over here. <laughs> she needs to look, look what you're doing, Olive. My gosh, she's wielding that knife and looking away. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. That's exactly how you wield the pencil in the morning, too. <laughs> so um, when I was reading about this dish, I read that it was very lemon forward, that, uh, which makes it wonderful for this time of year when there are so many lemons available. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's true. It's a great it's a great dish that way. That's and that's the the beauty of it. With it, it has such delicate, not delicate, but it's such a it's not a rich, heavy dish. So a nice a spritz of lemon with it, uh, it's fantastic. Yeah. And it's also this is also one of the most popular dishes to have aioli with as well, the garlic aioli. And oh. we have a lemon garlic aioli to go with this one today as well. Okay, so calamari is cooked away. I can let it blast a little bit more. And then we're going to add our sofrito to this and our fish stock. Okay, you let your lemons cut up. This is, all, this is all stuff that's our base of our sofrito. But we've already made the sofrito, so I was just showing this as an example. But the sofrito is already done, so we're going to ignore this stuff and pretend it's already it's just cooked away. And then we're going to also be adding saffron, smoked paprika, the to chopped tomatoes were also in the sofrito. We're using diced uh, to canned tomatoes. Obviously, this time of year, we can't get other tomatoes. And uh, the diced canned tomatoes, you know, they're ripe when they go in the can, and they're great, great for cooking with, so I prefer those anyway. Then we peeled uh, the shrimp. We were using uh, shell-on gulf shrimp, which I, I love, and I actually prefer it with the shells. So I think the flavor profile is good. But for ease of eating, we're going to use uh, – we already peeled the shrimp, so we're going to leave them just like this. And then – we have big day boat scallops. 
we're gonna just turn and burn them quickly and then uh, remove them out of the pan. Just we're gonna get some color on them and then we're gonna, uh, we're gonna take them out and put them back in later. So a sufrito is like a, a mirepoix. I mean, most, at least uh, European countries have a base like this that they start with, yeah. don't they? And, and yeah, they do. And you can really see what you've got chopped up on that board. So I wonder if you'd just tell us, take us through. Is it bell pepper, garlic? bell pepper, bell pepper, onion, and garlic. And then we're putting a little bit of salt and pepper and that's basically it. That's it. Okay. So this to this, this, trans, this transforms into this. Lovely. Yeah. And it's true, Latin, it's a Latin thing. It's, um, it's, it's Puerto Rican. So there's actually a lot of Puerto Rican sofritos you can actually buy. Oh. Okay, so we've got this going really well. We're gonna put some scallops in here and get some color on them and then remove them. Put a little more olive oil in the pan here. So, Gerard, how important is that paella pan? I noticed you have a special one there. The pan, the pan is fairly important. As long as it's for paella and fedoa, it's always a, a, a flat, shallow pan because you want the liquid to steam off. You don't want it to be uh, shaped like this, like a, like a wok, because all the liquid will gather and it'll be kind of gloppy. You want it to be a thin layer and all the steam goes away and then your, your, uh, your, uh, your rice cooks beautifully that way. Otherwise, it get, becomes gloppy and you don't want that at all. Sure. Okay. That'd be terrible. Excellent. Hang on one second and get some better tongs. Burn and turn, is that what you said? Turn and burn, yeah. <laughs> And then we're gonna add, we're gonna add our sofrito now. Just a little bit of color on that. So you're moving the scallops because they'll just cook and cook and cook, right? Yeah. Now we're gonna add our sofrito into here. It'll deglaze a little bit. You got some of the stuff on, stuck on the pan, which is great. Okay, now we're gonna take in, you want to, hey, Olive, do you want to come over and help on this side? Okay. I'm gonna have you, this is hot. I want you to very carefully scoop out. So this is up to right here of this stock, right there, yeah. Olive's gonna scoop out the, uh, the saffron fish broth right now. And then we're going to dump that in there, bring it up to a, a, a boil, and then we're going to dump in the fedoa noodles, and then we'll bring it up to a boil and let it simmer down. And then at that point, we'll add in all of our other seafoods and everything. And should it'll cook literally in that 10, 15 minutes. It'll be done totally. Wonderful. Yesterday's one, what? With the seafood, uh, the saffron uh, seafood broth there, did, how much? How many? How many threads did you use? And and what kind of? What's the purpose of the saffron? What what does it add to it? Uh, the the bouquet is amazing. The flavor of the saffron is amazing. Keep going. Um, we actually um, we actually grow saffron out here. Uh, not very much, but we do. And all of all of when I can coerce her, she will pick it out. Keep going. Uh, that's pretty good. She will pick out the threads for me. But that's that's she doesn't like doing that job very much. She understands. She charges a lot more than they do in Spain too, so. <laughs> but yeah, it's a bouquet, it's a flavor profile that really it's amazing. It's, and it's very distinct for, for paellas, for uh, uh, risottos. So now look, we've got the sofritos cooking down a little bit. We got the calamari in there. We're gonna add in our one and a half cups of stock. And then we're gonna bring that to a boil. I'm gonna have you put the pasta in. You put in a little bit more into here, so it's up to that line right there, the five, okay? So, Gerard, we okay. got that. Yeah. Um, we actually had, uh, we had, um, actually have some history on this, this dish. It was invented out on sea, and it was yeah. by Gabriel Rodriguez Pastor. And he worked as a cook on the boat, and he was an, a gentleman by the name 
Juan Batista Pascual Zabolo, who was the youngest man on the boat and was his assistant. And what happened, as I understand it, is that that the boat captain loved the rice and the rest of the sailors almost never got him. So <coughs> the chef was trying to determine a way, figure out a way to make the dish spread because the captain liked eating all the rice. So he, he substituted pasta, which goes to show that improv is a great way to do this. Cooking. That's how great recipes begin that way. Exactly, and then, then it actually spread, um, it spread to the, the yeah. land after they got off of it. So kind of interesting. I think it's very good. I like it. I think it's a great, I think it's a great dish. And it's, it's often, uh, you never think about it and people never cook it. And it's never, it's never available in restaurants. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it will be more, I mean, probably more and more you're finding it in lots of places now. It's really uh, on a huge trajectory as is lots of foods in Spain and the whole Mediterranean diet. Mm -hmm. But um, you're going to see this more and more because this is fantastic. And it is, it is a, a light version of paella, you know, so I think it's, I think it's great. Okay, we've got this oh, up to a remember. boil now. Yeah. Yep. I was gonna say, we remember. Um, now you go. You go first. I'll, my comment will come later. <laughs> okay. We um we just added a little bit of smoked paprika to it as well. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. And the smoke now. The smoked, yeah. pap smoked paprika make a difference. As There's opposed to other paprikas, or yeah, you no, know, it does. It's not well. It's not a spicy one. Okay. Um, like uh, what I usually tell people is you're very hard pressed to find anything spicy in Spain, except for, uh, soccer and political conversations. Otherwise the, all the spices left away, except for a couple of dishes, Papa Bravas, you might get some spice there, but for the most part, uh, you know, sometimes in the, uh, uh Padron chilies, but for the most part, they don't use hot paprika. They don't use a lot of any hot chilies or anything like that. Okay. Good to know. Okay, we are going to now add our toasted fideo noodles. Okay, I'm just going to give this a little jiggle around, get it all so it settles down a little bit. You want it to be even everywhere. Okay. Can, we, can we go back to the toasting of the noodles? Yeah. Does it keep the, 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 the pasta separate from each other or does it add a note of um, a, a sort of a, a toasty note to the dish? What's the purpose? You know, there's, there's, I couldn't tell you exactly what it is. Honestly, there's recipes called for it to go both ways. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I learned this a long time ago at the, um, the Culinary Institute and Daniel Oliveira, that used to be B44 who's now moved to Austin, Texas, has a restaurant there. He, he's known even in Spain for his black paella and also for his fedua. Oh. He, toasts, he toasts the noodles. I mean, people like to toast rice as well for paella. I don't oh. ever toast the rice. But um, the toasting of the noodles, uh, people like to do that. I'm not, I couldn't tell you. If you did a side-by-side -side test, maybe you could tell. I don't know if you could or not, if I could. But that's what people like to do. So I was just following that, what I learned. And then, so now I'm gonna spoon in all of our goodies here. We're gonna put our shrimp in. We're gonna turn them once. I know you can't smell it, but I tell you what, if Zoom could figure out how to make it things smell right, you'd know what I'm talking about right now. It's really good. So Gerard, question. Yeah. Uh, this is not on your menu, should it be? Your you know what it 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 will be eventually but it's one of those things where you'd have to run it as a special and see if we have any takers with it because it's really okay. um it's so specialized and right now we're still i mean people know about paella but we're still always reintroducing people are uh, introducing people to paella because that always still, still seems to be a surprise for people and they don't often probably 20 percent of our customers don't know what paella is so well what i was going to say what i was going to say yeah. before too is that when we had the paella cook-off, if you remember, yeah, second place went to Starks um, for Papa's Pro or for Bravas yeah. restaurant. Yeah, with, with this paella, with the with the, Fedua. exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we actually have had some local representation with it. Yeah, yeah, and they they actually made a great Fedua. It was fantastic. It was really good, and 
like Fedua, it was served with a, with a really good aioli. I can't remember. I think they may have done a smoky aioli with that. I can't remember. I know their aioli. There's something that's different about their aioli. It was fantastic. It was very, very good. Right. And we can point out that um, our friends at the chamber, um, Peter Rumble and team, actually won. Um, they tied for the People's Choice Awards. That's right. <laughs> that's so fun. Good afternoon. And we were hoping to get our friends from Savory Spice on, and I think they've been just busy, but Savory Spice is a store in downtown Santa Rosa, a spice shop, which how lucky are we in Santa Rosa to have a spice shop? And it's actually right on D Street, a block away from Gerard's. So a great spice shop too. Completely, and actually for those home cooks, um, like Gerard mentioned, the seafood stock, the smoke, paprika and the saffron are all items that you can get from them. You yeah. can get all of their items. I believe it's savory, um, savoryspiceshop.com and you can order online and have orders now. So for the home cooks that are looking at spicing things up, they're a good resource. They're a fantastic resource and it's great stuff. They're really good. Hey, I step out of the scene for one second. I'm just grabbing another ingredient. Hold on. That looks gorgeous. Well, we're nice. all home cooks right now, aren't we? I mean, everyone's a home cook, whether you like it or not. Pretty much. You're home everything. Yeah. <laughs> everything. Homeschooling. Homeschooling. You name it. That's right. Do you want, you want to add these? Do you want to add these all over the top of that, please? Okay, all I was gonna add peas to the paella now. You, you do with your ladder here. Next thing you know, we're gonna see be seeing olive at farmers markets and street. Yeah. Market. Oh yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it passes on. We we actually we're talking this morning. Um, yeah, you know, I ran into uh, I ran into Rob from Parish when I was at the restaurant this morning. And um, we were talking about the idea of closing down Fourth Street and 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 what it's going to look like. And we both agree that, that that would be such a great, refreshing thing to happen in Santa Rosa. Um, when I went into the restaurant, I was trying to envision people inside the restaurant and what that environment was going to be like with this current environment that's going on. Right. And I, it just doesn't feel comfy. And I think the idea of having El Fresco dining and people spacing far apart to stay at a farmer's market, I think will be wonderful and really a great, refreshing idea. And it'd be an easy one to try out for a little while, see if it works. If it sticks, great. If it doesn't, we just go back to how it was. But um, it was nice to hear him say that he really was supportive of that idea. Right. Now, I think safety is going to be uh, awesome. number one, number one concern for everyone getting back together. And so the more that we can do to make people feel safe and eating outside is actually going to be a lot safer of an environment. But for um, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I saw you quoted in the newspaper about it, Sherry, uh, and uh, it's such a good idea. I was, um, there, there were actually a lot of good comments. I give a lot of credit to um, the city of Santa Rosa and the Santa Rosa Metro Chamber and downtown Santa Rosa for actually having such an open conversation. And there were quite a few, there were at least two pages of Zoom people on there. So I, I think it's a great conversation. And, you know, I think um, new wicked problems demand new wicked solutions, and this just might be a wicked solution that could could stick. That's beautiful. That's great. I love it. Hey, George. Olive just, Olive just went in and nailed the uh, peas and the uh, the lemons on there as well. Very nice, Olive. I saw Olive sneak a pea too. Good girl. What? Did you eat one? Oh my gosh! Go wash your hands. Uh -oh. No, just kidding. <laughs> you have a question. Um, yeah. Someone would like to know the name of the restaurant in Austin, Texas, that the gentleman who, who who you toast your spaghetti like opened. You mentioned it quickly, and they'd like to know the name. The name of the restaurant, I can't remember. It's um, it's Daniel Oliver. If you look Daniel Oliver Austin, you'll you'll find it. He is amazing. Like the guy, he ran B forty four. Before that, he was at the Thirsty Bear in San Francisco. Then he opened B forty four. Fantastically uh, successful Spanish restaurant. Then he was uh, a teacher at the Culinary Institute of America while he saw the restaurant. And then he picked up and moved everything to Austin. And he's got a very cool farm to table uh, Spanish restaurant there. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, he's no, a really I'm amazing cool. guy. He's he also he also judged us on our throwdown on Food Network as well. He was on that episode too. Oh, Him and Andy Booth from uh, the um, from Spanish Table in Berkeley, which also has amazing supplies. They're not in Santa Rosa, but they're down in Mill Valley in Berkeley. Uh -huh. Spanish Table. Those guys are awesome for anything you want uh, to do with paella. They have it all. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Did you did you? This is just a little kind of local gossip. I don't know if you saw that um, Guy Fieri has been out and actually Heather Irwin from some family meal, which I'm on the board of, but they were out feeding um, the locals at the hospitals this week. So yeah, I like 900 people they did. Yeah, I think they were flooded yesterday. And I think what we're seeing is just that, you know, this community coming together is really awesome. And I think it follows a great spirit. And Gerard, you're part of the Sonoma family meal, the, the whole program. Yeah. Place. yeah. Where we're feeding. We love it. Yeah, it's and I think you're you're doing a couple hundred meals a week, and I believe they're going to Windsor. Is that right? The Windsor yeah. Alliance. Yeah, and it's going it's going great, and they have the, all their volunteers that work for them are fantastic. Um, and uh, so far, everything's going over like it's better than we could expect. It's very smooth operation. They, for what they're doing, it's unbelievable because they've got, they've got great volunteers that are just hustling nonstop yeah. to put a lot of food out there. I mean. The whole operation is just like, it's amazing. And right. we're happy to be part of it. It's really nice. Yep. Um, Louise actually just chimed in and said that Sausalito is planning to close down Caldonia Street and the plaza in Mill Valley is considering it. So it looks oh, like it's, really? like, yeah, it's catching on. And I do agree, Louise also mentioned, you know, a lot of Europeans, that's if, if you know, when we had the luxury of traveling, uh, a lot of the little cafes you're sitting out on the streets we actually have such great weather here. I was talking to folks in New York today and you know, they can do this for two or three months of the year, but it gets hard yeah. time. Yeah. We are really fortunate. So hoping that. Yeah. And, and fourth street is actually, it is, if you look at some of the old building stuff, it actually is a nice street to walk. If you could actually walk in the street, it's, right. it's actually a good street. There's, there's the buildings to look up. You're always under the, the awnings. If you're in the middle of the street, and you look up, there's a lot of old brick buildings there. They're actually pretty cool looking. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's, I think it'd be great. And the restaurants, having people socializing in restaurants, restaurants. I think what people don't realize is restaurants are the original Facebook. That's where everybody did everything, does everything, communicates, shows off, does whatever, goes on first dates, everything. And to not have that is really bad. And to be able to, if we can get that going in the streets and then see what happens from there, I think it's really. Like, I can't say how important it is. It's almost as important as trying to get my daughter to go me into a glass of wine. <laughs> no? Well, no? Um, while, no. While we have a second, <laughs> I'm going to say your pint of, um, I haven't, oh, I there haven't you go. <laughs> I have the candidate, but for 10 I'm going to say. Oh, okay, good. That was worrying me, Sherry. <laughs> we will leave it on for 30 minutes. <laughs> Ten dollars. I'm going to say that is a really that's that's like that's a bargain. So it's a it's a, it's a heck of a deal. And, and that's so great that even the ABC has actually made. You know, I don't even know who prompted them to do this, but like, how great is it to actually have a nice beverage or a cocktail delivered with your food? It's, it's just such yeah. a treat. It's and it's really it's a really great great move. Especially something you wouldn't make at home. I've done it with margaritas since the shelter in place. Yeah. Um, which I don't really know how to make a margarita at home. And then the sangria is just a treat because it's so, um, it, it, it's so, it's got that beautiful ginger taste to it. You add ginger beer, don't you? And yeah. it's so quaffable and light. Yeah, it is. It really is light. It's, today we added, we, we ran out of our traditional ginger beer and we added ginger uh, kombucha from Revive. And I think wow. it's even better. It's almost like a health drink now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> almost, almost. Almost. But yeah. I think your, your point is well taken too, like substitution. And I think even a wonderful thing about paella is you can pretty much, you know, you put a recipe here down as a guideline, but you can pretty much substitute what you like to eat or what you don't like to eat, especially on the protein side. And it's still yeah. going to come out pretty wonderful. It's almost like a, you know, it's, it's, it's like kind of your signature, well, it's your signature dish, but it can become the signature dish of, you know, whatever you have in your refrigerator. It seems. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah. Way it's, more it's, it's, what? 
way more versatile. I think most people are yeah. afraid. They're afraid to, to approach it because, gosh, will I do it right? Yeah. But you know, when you talked about the difference here is that you're also stirring it a little bit more, like with the rice paella that you'd made. Yeah. You're saying that you're, you're stirring it, you're really kind of letting well, it go. I'm definitely watching this a little bit to make sure it's doing okay. Like, like I said, last night, um, I've always done it where I'd start it on the stove and finish in the oven. You finish right. in the oven, the noodles all start to stand up a little bit and poke uh, vertically. And that's your telltale sign that it's all done. And it toasts a little bit on the top. It's actually a neat way of doing it. But it seemed like it was going to be a little complicated to do. So I thought, let's try to do it all stovetop today and see what happens. Um, yep. I'm, I'm happy with it. I've just tasted it. And I think it's very good. So, but I'm just babying a little bit because I want to make sure it's all, it's all working well. But it looks fantastic. It does. Yeah. Um, when you put it in the oven, is that just at 350? Uh, 450. Uh, so 40. in the oven, oh, what I did yesterday is I toasted the, the noodles at 350, pulled them out of the oven. They were on a sheet tray, pulled them out of the oven, and then crank up to 450. You finish it all off on the stove real fast, and then you put it back in the oven for about 10 minutes, and then the pie is the fit is done. Okay, that sounds good. But the thing it's about because it does toast on top, too. Sure, you're saying about the rice because with the uh, with traditional paella, you're trying to get with the, the sakura. Is that the word? Yeah. Is it like sakura? Um, that's sakura. that beautiful, crispy, crunchy um, level of the rice where it's yeah. down and has all those flavors, right? So this is very different. It's very different, but um, still kind of flavor profiles are still in the same wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. um, it just doesn't have that that richness to it. I mean, I, I mean. It's, it's, it's rich, but it's not as heavy as, as traditional uh, rice paella, that's for sure. Um, I think it's fantastic. I think with the aioli, it's, it's a total winner. It's a, it's a really good dish. And if you eat paella almost every day like I do, it's very refreshing to have a fait au <laughs> Can you talk to us about the aioli a little bit? Yeah, hang on one second. My assistant is, is requesting something. Oh yeah, she's gonna go check on her cat. Um, we had an emergency today. We had our cat went to the emergency room and uh came back about an hour ago so it's in the it's in the bedroom right now she's gonna go she's gonna go check on it real quick thanks olive we don't we don't know what happened it was this crazy it was a crazy morning the cat all of a sudden like went crazy like his eyeballs were like looking other ways and it kept on thinking he was running into things so we don't know what happened to it and we do the emergency room so and i thought it was a skunk encounter and right before this started today there was a skunk wandering around just outside the house during the daytime, which usually if we see a skunk during the day, it could be rabbits. So there's been a lot of excitement around here today <laughs> on top of what we're doing right now. Right. So this is looking good. The liquid is, is, is pretty much cooked away and it's, uh, we're getting some nice noodles exposed and it's getting close to being ready. Um, with paella recipes uh, and also with feta wine, it's it is traditional we're not gonna do it today but it is traditional to cover the dish with either newspaper or paper and let it sit for 10 minutes as well oh. and that still allows steam and stuff to leave the dish but it lets, it lets the uh, fish and stuff still cook on top oh interesting yeah in spain they always cover with the actual an actual newspaper oh. and yeah, I used to do that at first. It never went over in West County when I did that here. <laughs> I always uh, put my baked cookies on newspapers to cool. Um, yeah. I kind of like the smell of hot newspaper. Um, so you know, I'm going to... Go ahead, Wed. <laughs> I was going to say that the Press Democrats uh, food section today was all about pantry cooking. And yeah. I think that this lends itself perfectly to pantry cooking. It's, you can pretty much add what you've got. At 100%. It's really easy. Mm -hmm. um, so I just turned it, turned the heat off. We're gonna let it sit for a minute, and um, then yeah, you want to talk about aioli? Yeah. So aioli, um, aioli, alioli. Uh, they both come from Spain, um, like mayonnaise as well. And um, the aioli, traditionally, uh, alioli is just is purely just garlic and just olive oil. And you'll take it in a um, where's my water pencil? You'll take the garlic and you put it in the mortar and pestle, crush it down till it's a fine paste, and then you'll slowly add in olive oil until it's just a, 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 a paste, a, a garlicky paste, and that's the alioli. Um, some recipes for fedua, also called for parsley, to mix the parsley in with it as well. And it's uh, aioli with paella and fedua is, it's like peas and carrots. You know, they're, just, they're together. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, uh, I think aioli is a great dish. It's a great finisher. Um, for me, especially with our black paella, aioli is like the frame on a picture. Uh, like you can have a great painting and not know what's missing. You put the frame on it, you're like, that's what it needed. Like this. Look what just happened. <laughs> My little aioli. <laughs> Thank you. But, hey, Olive, how's the cat? How's she, does, she does that in the morning, too, for school. <laughs> Olive. Okay, we have a question for you. Olive, question: How's the kitty cat? She says, "How's the kitty cat?" Uh, he's good. He's just lying in his litter box, peeing a lot. Well, See, the, the, the cat was the cat was on IVs, and uh, so he, he's 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 drinking a lot. Oh gosh, is it an old kitty? No, no. it's a young kitty, but it's a it has a really really big uh, predation drive, so it's constantly getting gophers and stuff out here and yesterday it ate a huge gopher played with the skunk we weren't sure what else it was doing and all of a sudden yeah, it's not, it has a crazy hangover today apparently <laughs> oh boy there's a major ant problem what a major ant problem. in the room uh not in the room close to the room no. oh and apparently we have a major ant invasion i just found out just now <laughs> it must be from, it must be from cat food so maybe maybe it's going to be raining Right. Yeah, yeah, actually, it could it could be the the rain bringing all the ants in. Yeah. Uh, let me get out some aioli. Where's the aioli at? Now this aioli, we just we just make this at the restaurant and we serve this with our black paella, but it's just simply egg yolk, egg yolks, little white pepper, salt, lemon juice, olive oil. And with this paella, it's like a total hit, man. It's awesome. So I'm going to show you how we serve it up as well. We have a couple of, we have, we have a secret tasting judge here as well that's going to be testing the paella for us. Are these pretty to do? Oh, no. Okay, see? It really came out gorgeous. Yeah. So you've pretty much yeah. done, we're about 40 minutes in and we started a minute or so late. So this is like yeah. really almost a half an hour. Yeah. If we weren't yeah. bothered with questions, you'd probably really. I could, have, I could have done it even a lot faster for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's an, an easy dish to prepare. Yeah, it's beautiful. It really is. And even with just being a, a light pasta, because you toast things so much, it does have a, a good depth to it. The flavors uh -huh. do. So that's another reason that works. So it's a great, that's great. Yeah. Well, I, I know like when uh, Daniel Oliveira, for example, his fedoas are dark. If you look at recipes a lot online, you'll see fedoas are fairly light looking. His is toasted brown. Like everything is very, very brown. Wow. I finished off with some lemon. A little bit of aioli. And then if you want, you can put some parsley on top. We're just gonna leave it just like that. Okay. And we have over here, all of his mother, Anna, right here is our secret judging panel. <laughs> she's gonna she's gonna try the pie I'm the fedoa here. Olive's not gonna have any. She had some last night and uh oh. There we go. And we're back. We mm -hmm. it for a second. Well this is you know if people very good. Have... Give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yay. <laughs> we are encouraging everyone to try this at home. If you try it, send us a photo, hashtag it People's Paella on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And if you do it, we're going to give you till Sunday night at 8 p.m. And send us pictures, and Gerard will pick which one he thinks is the best. And, you know, what does the best mean? Who knows? But Gerard will pick a winner. And the winner will actually receive a free paella from Char. 
I have um, one of his dishes for three or four people. So that that's awesome. We are the also, band, yeah. we're, we're looking, you know, we've been, we did this show about three weeks ago with the folks from downtown Santa Rosa. And we're lucky enough to be connected with the Visit Santa Rosa folks that are um, actually kind of supporting us and putting the show on for the next three, four weeks. We put together a schedule and next week, next Wednesday, we're going to do a learning to make tapas and salads from Gerard. But we're going to also pull in the fine women from Miracle Plum. And okay. right, you know them, right? And they're doing... Sally and Gwen. Anna, yeah, maybe tell us a little bit about them. Um, well, Miracle Plum is just an extraordinary little store in Santa Rosa. Um, it's at the easiest place to miss and get onto the freeway by accident that I can think of. <laughs> but if you know where you're going, um, it is like a mini version of the Healdsburg Shed in that um, it has the best, uh, just beautiful, beautiful kitchenwares, handmade, hand-chosen foods, an amazing natural wine uh, selection. I actually belong to their online wine club. So every month you get two bottles of wine for $55 and it's whatever they have chosen, and they're always natural, and they always have a story that goes with them. And they're just, and then they do virtual wine tasting as well. So, and they, they are just uh, two young women who are just trying to really change things and make a difference in Santa Rosa and make things groovy and give us a good place to gather. Um, they have pop-ups, they had an amazing bagel pop-up in there where the people made their own bagels and they brought their own locks. And I just wandered in to buy a bottle of wine and I ended up with like this amazing meal that I started out with. I stop in every Saturday after I go to the farmer's market because they'll have what I didn't get at the market. You know, if I got there too late and I missed the green garlic or the lettuce, they'll have it and it would be beautiful. Um, they also have like gorgeous, um, Oh, that, that wonderful wild trout for, uh, that 2 by C helps to raise in Susanville. Um, they always have that in the freezer. Um, it's just an extraordinary place, and, and they're really cool ladies, so it's going to be super fun. Yep. That's all great info. I didn't know about the wine or the trout. Yeah, yeah. No, you should. That's awesome. Are, you know, Joe and I actually stopped in there one night. It was about 10 minutes after they had closed. And we looked in the windows and they, she, I think it was Gwen that opened the door and said, come on in. And she was very sweet. Yeah. And reminded me when we had Ranga, it's like, of course, if there's a customer, what do you do? You exactly. bring them yeah. in. And then they even have a beautiful place, I think, that they, that they must do cooking classes in there, too. They do. In the backyard, right? And they've been doing a lot of, pardon? Backyard parties, too. They their do. backyard, their courtyard. A little side yard. Yeah. Very Lover. They're right next to um, oh, like the Schwab. Um, you could park under the freeway. Anyway, you've got when you stop in, you'll see it and you'll see how cool it is. Um, but they're trying to do a lot of things to really um, to bring community together. Um, and before we were sheltering in place, they were doing a lot of baking classes and um, just teaching us the stuff we all need to know. We certainly that's what sheltering in place has taught us. Is, what did you how what did you think of the uh, the farmers market uh, as far as people are distancing and everything properly? Fantastic! I feel yeah, right? much more comfortable at the farmers market than I do at the regular grocery store. Yeah, um, you know, I see farmers using tongs to handle money. Um, we're all waiting six feet in line to go up and one by one have the farmer choose our lettuce for us. And yeah, um, I think people are so respectful, and I'm so anxious and eager to support the farmers and help us all get through this time. Um, it's kind of the highlight of my week. It's per pretty much the most social thing that happens for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, often I'll go no, to... No, I think it's great. I think it, the, the, the farmer's markets have been a great uh, uh, test vehicle for this because I went to the Petaluma one on Saturday uh -huh. and Sabasco on Sunday, and uh, it was great. The social distancing was great. Uh, the products were great. The uh, Everything about it was perfect. I was really happy. And then I actually called the health department and said, hey, we should follow what these guys are doing. It's great. And they said, the farmer's markets are killing it. They said their health department is so happy with what's going on with, with farmer's markets. They want to start taking that and putting it out in public and for other ways of doing things. I love that. I love hearing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's very natural and organic and it doesn't feel dangerous at all. And um, people yeah. are so glad to see one another. It's quite a joyful part of the week. And then all that good food, you know, it's so great to just, totally. what is, uh, you know, right now everything's green and so it's tonic and, you know, it helps to wake up the body and helps to promote your, you know, immunity and good health. And yeah. 
You know, and I'm going to say too, I mean, Miracle Plum also has a vibrant online shop. So I think it's miracleplum.com and you can order things and either pick it up and I'm sure that they might even do a curbside pickup, who knows. They do? Um, and that's, that's one thing, but I'll also say another great resource for getting your veggies is Feed Sonoma. Uh, I signed up for that yeah. box uh, and it comes weekly and I have to say it's always wonderful. I live in Occidental and they actually even for a small additional fee, they'll deliver it. So there's some really great, um, great things. And I think it's really important now that we support local. Yes. As much as possible. But I was on yeah. a roll. That's, that's, our, that's next week's session. The third week, <laughs> we're doing drinks and desserts. And we're hoping to get um, our friends, maybe um, Vikram from Willoughby's. And what would be also really great, we're, we're actually trying to lobby Gerard to get Frank Dice. Um, we're going to get him. We're going to get him. He's, he's logged in today, I believe. We're going to get him. Oh, good. Frank is now in uh, New Orleans, and we definitely miss him, but that doesn't mean that we still can't get a little uh, hint of Frank. And yeah, then yeah. The, last, the last session, and again, we can continue this to based on what people want to hear, what people want to learn, Gerard, your wealth of knowledge. But the last session, we were going to try, we were going to get a little wacky and do kind of squid paella. Uh, uh, black ink paella and Gerard I think you're thinking of maybe even putting together kits that yeah. people can order maybe they, they can cook along with you but yes yeah, so um, we'll, do, we'll do that coming up and we'll have the ink available at the restaurant and we'll give you a kit and then we'll do the show and you can do the whole thing together wonderful love it well Sherry maybe we should be cooking it with uh, maybe we should be cooking in our own kitchens while this happens that would no, be good. it's actually better kind of just drinking and <laughs> Ah, cheers, cheers. Cheers. Salute. Thank you, Olive. Thanks, what a everybody. good assistant you were. What a good overlord you were. <laughs> I can't know yet because Gerard, there is someone that asked, um, someone is interested in getting a pie, uh, like a larger setup for outside. I'm going to yeah. try to figure out like what pans to get, what stands to get, and what they should Spanish, Spanish table. Spanish Go table. To Spanish table in, 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 in Mill Valley. Okay. They'll they, set you up. You it'll, you be up. A, it'll be like a, a, I don't know what size they want, but judging from what I know, I bet uh, about 120, 150 bucks for the burner plus uh, maybe 80 for the pan. And that'll be good for a party anywhere from 15 to 40 people. And that would be great. Perfect setup. And does the burner, I mean, and maybe we can actually look at this in one of the sessions. Does the burner, yeah. that just hooks right to a standard gas barbecue can. bottle. Yep. Right to your barbecue bottle. Same, same setup, same fitment, same everything. Yeah, no, excellent. Yep. Cool. Well, thank you and thank everyone for joining us. Thank um, you guys, yeah. We've updated the recipe. We definitely appreciate you all being there. Gerard, we appreciate you and especially taking the time and having Olive and Anna there too as well. Which is it was great. good, thank you. Thank you both yeah. of you, yeah. And then you see that our liquid ratio was correct because see, we don't have anything running down the pan, so. Yeah. I always struggle with liquid, whether it comes to liquid to pasta or liquid to rice, and whew, we got it right. <laughs> One and a half cups. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, okay. thank you very thank you. much to you guys. Thank yeah. You guys. Good luck bye -bye. to you with your little kitty. And, um, thank you so much. Ciao. We'll keep you posted. Excellent. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Okay.